Hey everyone, Josh here. So today we're doing an oil pan on a BEW TDI. Uh, it should be pretty similar to an ALH as well. Uh, we're gonna go over a few different options before we get started here. And then uh, a couple tools, you gotta be kind of careful on a few things here yet. So uh, let's go over the pan itself. Okay, so our first option is just the traditional aluminum oil pan, just cast aluminum, quite cheap and in inexpensive. <clears throat> get it from Amazon, ID Parts. Uh, any of your online favorite retailers. So this one's from ID Parts itself. And yeah, it's an oil pan, it'll keep the oil inside. But to be honest, if you're watching this video, there's a good chance your oil pan cracked and the oil is no longer inside. So a better option is this two liter gas hybrid oil pan, which fits on TDIs as well. Okay, so this oil pan was found on the two liter non-turboed Mark IVs as well as the Jetta Cities and Gulf Cities. So you need to make sure it is meant for the two liters or TDI. Uh, it doesn't have the turbo return line here. The TDIs have it into the block and obviously the Mark IVs don't have, or the Mark IV two liters don't have a turbo. So you don't have to worry about drain for that. Um, they both have their pros and cons. So this hybrid pan, uh, the pros, obviously, they've got a little bit more give, so they don't end up cracking. Um, I guess the, con, the cons would be you've now got two ceiling surfaces to leak. Um, they're about twice as much money, but if you consider we've had to spend $50 in oil to get this thing home, so it's kind of, yeah, it is what it is. Um, another con that I've noticed, at least on the Jetta Cities and the Gulf Cities, is that steel bottom gets really rusty on the outside. So it's not really thick steel, so I don't imagine there's a whole lot of give. Once it gets rusty, it might just poke through instead of flexing. Um, but yeah, this car doesn't have any issues of getting rusty. So that's that. The original pan is nice and easy to install. Um, it's cheap and readily available. So that's that. It's pretty light, like it's, yeah, just cast aluminum. So I can see why they get holes poked in them. But anyways, we're gonna install this one. Um, there might be some modifications required on this front corner where the AC compressor or power steering pump is, depending on which car you have. So we're gonna see what kind of modification we need to get into there. Um, and also you're going to want some nice ball and Allen bits to be able to get these two bolts out. So I'll show you what the issue is with there and what will end up happening if you're not careful. Okay. So looking at the pan here, you can see it's got a pretty good hit all the way across here. So she said it was a really big pothole in a parking lot. So this is the second pan that she's went through. It cracks on actually on my ALH, which is lowered. I think it was a high centered spot on a gravel driveway and it cracked it this way. This one's actually cracked just above the drain pan or the drain plug. On the back side there, you can see it. Get my finger out of the, you can see it right in here, dripping out of there. So not much you can do with that. So gotta get replaced so we're gonna get this unbolted and out of the way but first drain the rest of the oil out i guess so that's about it so i gave her five liters of oil to get home uh it's probably a liter or two in the driveway and yeah quite a just about a liter probably in the pan here left over so we're gonna let this drip away and uh start unbolting some stuff so at the beginning I said we needed some nice ball and allen bits. So all these, they are 10 mil bolts, but they're also allens in the center. So I'm gonna go all the way around with 10 mils. Um, but the ball and allen, I want them for here. Um, let's turn the flash on the camera here. So we've got one there, that's nice and easy. That's straight up from here. That one, it might it's a little deceiving, but it's kind of this way so you're not going to be able to get at it straight so you need a pretty good ball and bit um, maybe a flex socket might be able to get it but i think your flywheel is going to be in the way so these two here sorry these two here are important to make sure you get on there nice and square so a bit of brake cleaner in there make sure you can get your ball and allen in there 
Um, I'll explain why here in a second. Okay, so that this BEW, let's get that out of the way. So this is your rear main, and these are these two bolts that I'm talking about that are kind of suck to get at. Um, the issue is you want to be able to make sure you get these out, and then when you're putting them back in, you don't want to cross thread. Uh, this is an aluminum cover, which as we can see, aluminum likes to crack and it doesn't really forgive. So if you cross thread, you might crack it. Um, earlier ones are plastic. So I've done two or three ALHs where somebody's replaced the pan and then cross thread these bolts in and then it cracks here. So then you might have a new pan on, but now it's going to be spitting oil out of there. So you're no farther ahead. So that's just something to keep an eye on as these are very important not to cross thread. So the next issue you might run into is you've got the bolt loose, but it won't fit out. Um, the flywheel actually has cutouts, so you can just kind of see the edge of the flywheel. So it's shaped, cuts out and then back in. So you can kind of wiggle the bolt out. I got a little bit of uh, RTV stuck on it here yet, but... That way you can actually have room to wiggle it out and around the flywheel. Okay, so we got all the fan or the, all the pan bolts all the way around out. So now we gotta do these bigger transmission bolts here yet. So these are probably one time use, but they're getting reused here, so it is what it is. Okay, so we got this pan off, so it's held on with RTV, so a little bit of a pry and off it comes. Um it's got a little pry hole in the front corner here as well as the back corner. Or I guess that would be the front and the back corners here so you can get in there with a pry bar and kind of pop it off um so looking at a few things we've got the windage tray which looks like it's going to sit in here nicely on the new one you kind of eyeball that up on the old one um this front corner looks quite similar so i'm hoping we don't have to do any shaving i'm going to clean up here nicely and we're going to test fit it um and then this one here, it's got the plastic rear main that I was talking about, so I'm going to clean everything all up nicely. Um, this kit actually came with a gasket, so I think I'm going to use the gasket to seal it. Um, and then I'm just going to put a little dab of RTV between the plastic and the block, like just kind of right in here. Just so the gasket's got a little bit more sealing, sealness, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to call it, but... Just, uh, just to make sure that's sealed up good. Um, everything else looks nice under here, or nothing too out of the blue. So we're gonna clean it up here and uh, see how this new one fits. Okay, so I did a test fit with this hybrid pan. Everything fits in there good. There's gonna be no trimming needed. Um, one thing I don't like is how poorly this gasket fits. And then it's a fairly stiff gasket. Like you're not gonna flex that, really get it lined up. Um, the gasket out of the aluminum pan kit is spot on. Pretty well. So I'm gonna put a little bit of sealant here, here, and then where does this pan? The front time and cover joins in between these two bolt holes there. So that would be right here and right here. So I'm just put a little bit of sealant there as well. And then we'll pop this pan on. So before assembly, I'm just running these through my uh, parts washer, which is this brake, can uh, brake clean and a DeMorton's cup. So it works pretty good. Just kind of drop her in there and swoosh it around and comes out nice and clean. So then you don't have to worry about crud inside the holes and at least the threads would be nice and clean too. I guess one other thing I should have mentioned, I would have popped the oil filter out to begin with when draining the oil. Um, you've got all the oil out anyway, so you may as well do an oil change and a filter change. So now I've got a little bit of oil dripping now that I want to install the, uh, install the pan. And here's the pan on. So we'll get a new oil filter in and some new oil and check for leaks. Um, so as far as fitment, um these three trans bolts are questionably fitting um this one here 
fit okay. This one was okay. Um, this one not so much. It was off a little bit and I kind of gave it a bit of a spin with the impact while pushing and it kind of grabbed or made some threads. So yeah, that's it. No grinding anywhere else though, so that's nice. So yeah, it is what it is. It should uh, prevent any more holes poking through unless she hits something really big. So we'll get some oil put in there and uh, see what happens. Well, it's not pouring oil out of the bottom, so that's a good sign. It's better than when it came in. So that's basically what we're after. So we'll top up the oil and it's gonna run for another half a million now as long as keep it away from potholes apparently so uh anyways thanks for watching and hopefully this video helped